Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have d squared y over dx squared equals y times dy over dx. So what is dy over dx and what is d squared y over dx squared? These expressions might look confusing, but they're just notations, which mean the derivatives of y with respect to x dy over dx basically represents the first derivative of y with respect to x, which we can abbreviate as y prime, and d squared y over dx squared is the second derivative or the derivative of the first derivative of y with respect to x, and we can use y double prime for that. So if we use that notation, obviously, it's going to look a little better, so let's go ahead and write it that way. We have now y double prime equals y times y prime okay so we're looking for a very special function whose derivative multiplied by itself gives us the second derivative in other words instead of differentiating the first derivative you can just multiply it by the original function and that gives you the derivative make sense great so think about what kind of function can we have? Make some guesses because if you're solving a problem, making some guesses will actually help set up the solution method most of the time. But it's going to help you at least. So when I see something like y times y prime, that reminds me of the chain rule. I hope you are familiar with the chain rule. But basically, the chain rule tells us to differentiate a function of x with respect to x. So, for example, you have something like, let's say, cosine x squared, and you're trying to differentiate it. What do you do? You first differentiate it like something squared, like x squared, which means you're going to bring the power down and reduce it to the first power. And then we have to do what's called the derivative of the inside. In this case, that would be the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. Make sense? And that would conclude it. And with the composition of functions, if you have f of g of x, and let's say you differentiate it, you basically differentiate the f, which is the outside, and then replace whatever the you know variable with g of x, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is g prime of x. So this can be applied to very many situations, but it's called chain rule. Now, why does this remind me the chain rule? Let me tell you. If you go ahead and take, think about a function which I'm about to write, y squared and differentiate it using the chain rule. Now, this is y is a function of x. If you just had x squared, the derivative of x squared would be just 2x. Bring the 2 down and reduce the power. But we're going to do the same thing. Yes, it's going to be 2y, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside which is y prime. You see what I'm talking about? I have y times y prime and 2y y prime is what I can get from the derivative of y squared. Awesome. But I don't have 2y y prime. That's okay. We can take care of that. So I hope chain rule makes sense. Let's go ahead and apply it to our situation. Now, we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 here. So 2y double prime equals 2y y prime. And as you know, 2y y prime is the derivative of y squared, right? What about 2y double prime? Is that the derivative of something? Well, of course, we just defined it, right? y double prime is the derivative of y prime. Make sense? So in other words, we can kind of write it as follows. So what about the 2? 2 is a constant, it can go in and out, so it doesn't matter. We have the constant rule, so we can kind of write it like this. So the derivative of 2y prime is 2 times y double prime. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's continue. Now, it's nice because now we have the derivative of two things that are equal to each other. Now, if f prime equals g prime, then f is equal to g plus a constant. Right? So if two functions have the same derivative, then they differ by a constant. That's how we uh, call it. So these two functions here are going to differ by a constant. What I mean by those two constants is what's inside. So 2y prime is y squared plus a constant. Awesome. This even makes things better because now 
this will become a separable differential equation, which we're going to go ahead and solve. So, how do we solve it though? Let's go ahead and first of all divide both sides by 2 and then replace y prime with dy over dx. You see, these notations are different, but they express the same thing and they have their advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, y prime is a good shortcut, but it doesn't specify with which variable or, or with respect to which variable we are differentiating. In this case, dy over dx is more specific, right? If you have a function with multiple variables and then you're differentiating, sometimes you do take partial derivatives, right? Something that looks like this, a weird notation, del, whatever. And in this case, it basically tells you what to differentiate uh, with respect to, okay? So, after replacing y prime with dy over dx, we get the following. This is separable because go ahead and divide both sides by y squared plus c. In other words, bring it over to the left and put the dx on the right hand side and you'll get the following. And yes, we can differentiate both sides. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I meant integrate. Okay, how do you integrate y squared plus c though? It's in the denominator. So we'll do a little bit of uh, hocus pocus, I mean mathematic. Let's go ahead and replace c with a squared. So we kind of have like the integral of dy over y squared plus a squared. Am I allowed to write the formula? Or I can show you. Let's go ahead and replace y with a t. And then from here dy becomes a dt. By the way, a is another constant here. And then I'm changing the variable. This becomes a dt divided by a squared t squared plus a squared. And that gives me a dt divided by a squared times t squared plus 1. And this actually does the trick after canceling out one of the a's. We get 1 over a times dt over t squared plus 1, which is the arctangent or the tan inverse. Make sense? So this integral is pretty easy. We have a formula. We even have formulas for these kinds of things. Uh, but I don't know if you want to memorize it. But this turns into 1 over a times tan inverse of t. I'm not going to write the constant yet, but this is equal to the integral of dx over 2, which is 1 half of x plus a constant, but I'm not going to use c because I, will, I already used it. I'll back substitute it, okay? So this is my expression about what is t, what is a. Let's go back and find out c is a squared, so can I safely assume that a is going to be square root of c with a plus minus sign, but that's a constant. Come on, we can keep it at square root of c. So this is going to be 1 over square root of c times 10 inverse of t. And by the way, t is y over a from here, but a is square root of c, so we can write the t as y over square root of c. Makes sense. And that equals 1 half of x plus k, and this pretty much brings us to the end of this video. But if you wanted to kind of do a little bit more work on this, you can, and that would basically be multiplying both sides by square root of c, and then tanning both sides, which is like tan. If you tan, tan and tan inverse hopefully will cancel out, and then you're going to get y by itself. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.